about them probably uh, I'm joined as always by resident future Martians Gary uh, and <laughs> and I'm also joined by, <laughs> <It's> Allison. <laughs> by Allison our resident tarot reader also a future Martian probably it's a weird spacecraft, but we got, we got things on lockdown. <laughs> no scientists, no botanists like in the movie The Martian, but yeah, we'll no, we're uh, we're in the um, uh, the the B arc. The B arc. Is... <laughs> oh, Carrie gets it. Yeah. Uh, the B arc. We is don't really have any like real useful skills, but right. yeah, we're there to like you know. Make so humanity there's, interesting. There's the A arc that has all of the important scientific people and people who discover things and think about things and whatever. And then there's the C arc, which has all the the workers and the people that actually do important like building things. And then there's the B arc, which is all the hairdressers and the accountants and project managers. The community flavor. <laughs> yeah. I was gonna say I was just like, well, as a vegetarian, I'm practically a botanist. <laughs> oh, not at all. <laughs> That's a leaf. Very, very close. That's a green thing. We can eat that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if uh, the kind of community flavor I'd bring to a, a space colony would be any good. Oh, the community flavor I would be would, would be like, you know, like the pre-mixed seasonings you get. At, you know, like seasoning places, like, oh, here's the, what they call it, Mediterranean flavors, and it's like already got like pre mixed for you. Here's Greek seasoning, and it has, you know, salt and whatever other stuff goes in Greek. Yeah. Salt and some other stuff. <laughs> well, let me, let me read that. I'm just looking at why. Let me read the side of it. Now, I'm, now I am really curious. I'm like, what else goes in Greek seasoning? Uh, salt, black pepper, cornstarch, garlic, monosodium glutamate, glutamate, of course, oregano. Uh, Flavor base seasoning, which is hydrolyzed corn, soy protein, sugar, onion powder, spice extricatives, parsley, and five other spices. What are the five other spices? Oh, <laughs> oh they just spices. actually say and five other spices. Yeah, and then here's one called 21 Seasoning Salute. I have to count one. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's, it's 21, right in the nose. Of course. There's no liars. Yeah. So um, as of as of last week, I'm just looking at uh, at the website. Uh, as ooh. of last week, uh, we will have hit 50 episodes. Proudly, uh, congratulations! Which is um, wait for it one one zero one one zero in binary. Ooh. Yep. Nice round. Yep. Fifty. That's great. And that, that website is on the internet. It is on the internet, where At things binary. typically are. Binaryjazz.us. We are also on the internet. Uh, collectively, as a, as a group on Twitter, uh, at Binary Jazz, but also individually on Twitter, uh, Allison plus Binary Gary and Jazz Sequence with a three. But you have to guess where the three It's a very long username. <laughs> Jazz Sequence with a three? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, you're like, I abbreviate. Yeah. I like that you have to guess where the three goes. <laughs> yeah. Is there one three, two threes? Three threes. Is it a vowel? Of there's three threes. <laughs> three is actually just all threes. <laughs> three, 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 three. Three, 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 three. <laughs> it's just pronounced jazz sequence. Yeah. <laughs> the three is silent. <laughs> <laughs> I'm changing my name today. Oh, I'm just gonna introduce myself more and also include my Twitter handle and just be that person. <laughs> Hi, I'm Allison. I'm Allison Plus on the internet. 
Meanwhile, I don't talk to enough people. The barista will be like, that's nice. <laughs> cool. be like, Let's see, at Allison <laughs> plus great. I hoped you were up to something over there, but. How know. do people that use different handles on different services introduce themselves? Aww. That's a long intro. Yeah. I am Gary, at Gary Gary on Twitter, at something else on Facebook, at, you know. All right, you're not at anything on Facebook, are you? You're just your name on Facebook? People reference themselves on Facebook like that? I you, can have a, you can have I a vanity. You can have a vanity URL. <laughs> so like my, my Facebook thing is facebook.com slash jazz sequence. I, I think mine is probably binary Gary on Facebook, but I don't use Facebook other than for like dev tools these days. Yeah. Um, like if I have to work on something. Uh, but I haven't closed it because I open the window to close it and I'm like, I'm going to need this for something. <laughs> dev related yeah and, but will you i mean i because I'm, I'm going through the same thing right now i'm just like will yeah, i hope not the last time i used it for dev related stuff has been within the last 12 months so yes yeah even just like testing api stuff before dropping in the real whatever because i kind of just even want to opt out of even having that as an option and being like no i just won't i just don't but I don't know. Then there's that yeah, one maybe cousin that you have to stay in touch with. And you're... I, I like Instagram far too much uh, to quit Facebook. I know. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what Instagram is. So. What do you mean you don't know what Instagram is? I don't know. It just never, I never, it never clicked for me. I know that many people are on there showing awesome photos of things they are doing or eating. Um, I just want you to be jealous of my life. Gary, that's all. I'm already <laughs> jealous of your life. I don't need photos. <laughs> that's what these images are for. If, if I'm not taking aerial photos of food, then who am I? <laughs> yeah, when we were doing the restaurant website thing, I always felt so ridiculous taking, like taking. Well, like, yeah, I mean, and setting up lighting, like going to a different table so it was near the window. Because, you know, there are times where we had thousands of people reading those, these articles and it I felt responsible for writing good content with good photos. Well, yeah, and you don't want like a garbage photo of like a casserole or something. They're hard enough to photograph as it is. Like, <laughs> Yeah, I think I only got one really good photo and it, the lighting was great and it was this like white plate and the food was just like so beautiful against the plate. Everything else was just like, that. Ah, here's some lunch. <laughs> so. Well, that's because most food is like, that's, I mean like food staging and food photography is the, a whole thing and half the time it's not even food anymore by the time they photograph it it's like made of glue and i make a point not to not to instagram food unless it's food that i've made yeah in, in that case it's probably not very pretty <laughs> and because i don't plate things properly i'm just so excited to have food that i made that i'm just like and, yeah and that we can eat yeah hey, look it's a pie that i can eat as a gluten-free vegan mm, pie <laughs> Elmer's. I think that was probably the last food that I that I grammed. Yeah. Was pie. Was pie? Yeah. It's a good choice. Yeah. I would look at a lot of pie photos if I were on. It was a pumpkin pie and a pecan pie for pie day. Oh, yeah. That just happened. Yeah. Like a couple weeks ago. On pie day. <laughs> Strange how right. that happens. So I have a new computer and I have a new version of Zoom and the new version of Zoom has like all these new features that I didn't either have or notice that was, were available to me previously. So like I could up the resolution of my camera, which was like, it was bugging me how like grainy it was. Like I, I got this $2,000 laptop and surely the video is better than this. Um, but that was the thing that was just a setting. Uh, and also I have this little timer now. Uh, in the upper right hand corner of my screen that tells me how long how long this call has been. Oh, yeah. so now you have a better idea of when the countdown will be. Yes. <laughs> Different than um, the experience. Do you have in the upper left hand corner a little green lock that says E? Uh, not currently because in the upper left hand corner it says recording. Oh, see I have, well, right next to recording I have a little lock that says E and when I hover over it says Zoom is using an end-to-end -end encrypted connection. Oh, I'm not encrypting, that's probably why. I didn't do anything to encrypt. I just did it on its own. Yeah. So now yeah, I'm wondering I, I saw like, that all these setting. previous recordings like. I oh. saw that setting and I, I was like, I was like, that's probably going to introduce some uh, some additional traffic or CPU usage or something. And Zoom already sucks up a lot, so we're gonna just leave that off. 
Yeah, what is the CPU usage like then? It gets ridiculous, especially when you have lots of video. Or if you have one of those cool Parisian backdrops where you're like underwater. Those work now. <laughs> I, so I tried not, it. You're not in the matrix anymore? Uh, I'm not part of the matrix anymore. Yeah. Um, Congrats. I mean, I it- change that. <laughs> I feel like you lose something. <laughs> yeah, there's a <laughs> strange- How's the Bay Area? <laughs> <laughs> the weather looks amazing. I, I feel like you should be painted blue and playing weird drums. <laughs> I still love the grass one. It's very, it just, I just go to that Honey, I Shrunk the Kids place. Here, maybe I can find I have a green screen. No, I do not have a green screen. Um, not yet. <laughs> let's see if I can find. You carry on. I'm just gonna go peruse my picture. Like cycle through the backdrops. Well, I mean, those those are the backdrops. That's it. So um, beyond that, uh, it's, uh, it's not really anything. What are the What are the reports on CPU, Gary? Uh, I don't know. I got distracted <laughs> in Zoom settings. In Zoom settings or space settings? Let's be honest. What are you looking at? <laughs> I feel like Ooh, I can adjust the oxygen saturation. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> well, the helmet goes on all of a sudden. What, yeah. what space movies have you all watched this week? Anything good? Space <laughs> movies. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I saw um, Aaron and I watched um, Aquaman last week. That's not really a space movie, but it kind of is. Is it good? Um, I mean, it's everything you expect it to be. Oh, okay. I don't expect a lot, so I'm going to be really excited. <laughs> It's, it's, um, yeah, it's, it's a superhero movie about a dude in, in the water. A romp. Yeah. Hmm. There we go. There's one. Oh, wow. I believe this is at, uh, Watson Lake in, uh, Northeastern, Northeastern, Northwestern. I think Northeastern Arizona. You could lie flat out to us. And this I could, nice yeah. To do it. This is in the rainforest. <laughs> this is, <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, there was such variety. <laughs> well, yeah, we're um, still we're still chugging through uh, season two of or season whatever two is in the Netflix series of the Great British Bake Off. Uh, mm. mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. reporting as season two, but I don't think it actually is season two. Mm. Um, uh, we're up to the next episode tonight, probably, unless there's something else that's better. To watch tonight but let's be honest nothing is better than great british bake off yeah. <laughs> my favorite thing about that show in particular is the just inherent like british cultural habit of making terrible puns Cheekiness. yeah that's the word that's a way better way to describe it yeah it's really it's really what i get out of it because i like the measure stuff in grams and furlongs. i like i like the I like i don't know I like the random like occasions when like somebody is extremely British. Like Paul said something last night uh, where obviously it wasn't last night. It was, you know, however many years ago. This several happened. years ago. Yeah. <laughs> um, um, he said something last night. He said that it was, it had too much spice. There was far too much paprika. And I'm like, dude, paprika doesn't have heat. Like, There's too much heat. It has, you have to tone down the paprika. I'm like, dude, that's not, that's not heat. It's not the How British so, are you? That's funny. So, so Paul and Mary, right, are just fantastic. They're so delightful. Every time they eat food at the like the beginning and they talk about what it's going to be, I, I love them together. It's just so wholesome. This is supposed to be a celebration of pastry. This is not a celebration of pastry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love everything about that show. But yeah, we'll be watching the, the next episode is, is the final uh, for mm. the season that we are on. So no spoilers, listeners. Yeah. Hold Someone, that. well, we already, we're, we already have a pretty good idea who's going to win. So it's not, it's not, yeah, it was kind of telegraphed like midway through, even at the beginning, really. I also, the, have you seen the Twitter account for the No Context British Bake Off? Mm -mm. Where they just have screen caps with various things. And they're all things like, well, I might as well be dead now. Or like, and they're like taking something out of the oven and like, <laughs> <laughs> like random. I love it. <laughs> I'm going to look that up after this call. Actually, I'm going to look it up right now. Yeah. 
that seems uh, we'll to that. Yeah, what we uh, what we do here. We uh, we talk about a topic that we know nothing about, which so far right on track today, and um, <laughs> right on track to nowhere. Yeah, and then uh, at the end we uh, answer questions about completely <laughs> other unrelated things. No, this is great. This is great. My other favorite new Twitter account. Is... I don't care enough about winning. Is that why you're in the Labor Party? Yeah. <laughs> wow, that's both intriguing and useless. <laughs> yes, excellent. Oh, I lost it. Uh, let's see, click on follow. <laughs> <Click> <laughs> Tech yeah. professionals, click on follow. <laughs> <laughs> um, I actually went into the archives to double check that I hadn't already done this topic. Um, because I was oh, like, good. yeah. So it's one of those weeks where I was like, second guessing myself. So what is the topic? Yeah, what is the topic? The topic this week is apophenia. Can you please use that in a sentence? <laughs> the topic this week is apophenia. <laughs> apophenia. That was um. Wasn't she a musician back in like the? <laughs> that's Apollonia. We did that. We did that in a previous episode. Similar, and that's I think. And that's, that's why, yeah. There was something. Yeah. I was having a deja vu thing before I said that, but like, yeah, that makes sense. Apo apophenia. Yeah. yeah. It's all been done before. A P O P H E N I A. So obviously, yeah. Uh, obviously, obviously, apophenia uh, is a compulsion or obsession about yep. Apollonia. The, <laughs> so <laughs> the 80s um, artist who performed with Prince. <laughs> yeah. Um, it all comes so, back to Prince as it always. should. Always, yeah. Phenia is the opposite of phobia, right? We yeah. know that. Yeah. From all of our various schoolings. And that's why it's an obsession so, with Apollonia. Apophenia. Um, what would apophobia be the fear of? Apophobia would be, apophobia the, would be the fear of Apollonia. <laughs> it is not. It is not. It is not. <laughs> Such a specific fear. <laughs> it is a but fear are. of. I mean, it's fair. There's tons yeah. of really specific fears. What else would it be called? Apollonia phobia. Apollonia. Nope. Got That's it. It's not like a sandwich you get at some like local podunk sandwich shop. Yeah, Apollonia phobia. Right? Right? Yeah. Oh, to have what would if you were if there was a sandwich. Two layers shop, of insecurity. That's a question. If you were gonna have a themed sandwich named after you, what would be on your sandwich? Oh, um, that's so bad. Wow. Um, hmm. I love sandwiches, <laughs> just in general. So how would you choose your, your signature sandwich? Yeah, I'm a, I'm a classic sandwichist, right? So I like the ones that have iconic names, right? Oh, okay. Um, like a Reuben, like that's a, you, when someone says a Reuben, you know exactly what it is, right? Um, and you have to like you have to mention the ingredients. Am I a bad human like, if I don't know exactly what it is? I was, gonna, I was I, but see, I think I don't think we can. We often get left out of the sandwich architecture. You totally do. You totally do. There is not a uh, a good vegetarian option in replacement for a, a Reuben. I don't know how that would work. Is, is that corned beef? Am I correct? Yep, and sauerkraut and Thousand Island dressing. Okay. Yeah. See, there's. Yep. What are you gonna? Are you gonna I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. What what could have that texture? What could replace that? This I mean, is more important. There's question. various there's various vegan like deli meats, but I haven't ventured to try any of them. Yeah. Um, maybe, maybe the good old jackfruit could make an make an appearance. No, well, I mean, it needs to be like a thin slice. I mean, I guess if you could like... Maybe a little stringy. I guess if you could like, I don't know, grind up jackfruit and then like reconstitute it like a hot dog, you know? <laughs> I don't think it's like a hot dog. No, you're yes, thinking... The, the Dyson Sphere sandwich. This is where we're... Yes, this is the vegan, the vegan version, yeah. You use jackfruit. Probably. 
Yeah, okay. I was just thinking like I don't I think like a ham and Swiss like while being like, ah, eh, it's a pretty standard sandwich, right? It's a pretty boring name. Oh, like, I see. You know, like a Reuben, like it sounds exciting and whatnot. But if you say like a ham and Swiss, it doesn't matter how good the ingredients are at that point. It's still a ham and Swiss. Ham and Swiss. So anything that also just like this, the ingredients is boring. Yeah. I also like the Mitch Hedberg approach, like uh, to sandwiches. Um, I don't even remember like where it went in the joke, but he wanted a banana bread, ham and cottage cheese sandwich. You could pick your bread and cheese and that was the, it, anyway. You. I liked it. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I don't think anybody would eat that, but it was hysterical in the concept of pick any cheese you want. Okay, so, so a, a sandwich <laughs> named after me, uh, it would be on gluten-free bread, obviously. A gluten-free roll. It'd probably be some sort of a, a like a black bean patty thing with um oh let's just go let's just go all out let's it's a black bean patty with um with uh guacamole and um and tofu bacon and uh and vegan cheese and like ketchup or something yeah so i would want to go I would also want to go something that's vegetarian friendly. Um, so it would be plantains as like the base. Fried plantains, right? Wow. Uh, with, um, ooh. Probably lettuce, cheese. Not sure what kind of cheese. Tomato, onion. I don't know what sauce would go with it either. Maybe a cheese sauce of some sort, sort, but I don't. No. I've got, a, I've got a cheese sauce. Tell me your cheese sauce. Oh, it's um, you. Uh, it's it's cashew based. Uh, it's cashews and um, nutrition based and um, uh, basil and a little bit of garlic and a little bit of salt and a little bit of lemon juice and then you blend it up until it's smooth. Um, Nutritional yeast is also called what? Nooch? Yeah. <laughs> is that right? Well, in my house. That is in my house, too. Yeah, Nooch. <laughs> is that the one there was a push a couple years ago to call it Gary instead? No, that's that's the cheese. That's the oh. that's vegan cheese is called Gary. Oh, cool. But nutritional yeah. yeast is a, is a component of many vegan, if not most vegan cheeses, because it has kind of a cheesy flavor. Um, yeah. So when you want that sort of savory, cheesy flavor, you put nutritional yeast in it. Um, the secret so, that, that would be my sandwich. It would be plantains with Gary, lettuce, tomato, onion. <laughs> it sounds like a weird cooking show, plantains with Gary. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, secret, the secret to that sauce, that cheese sauce, is um, <laughs> you soak the cashews. So I have a new icon. Yeah. And, and the other secret is, depending on how liquidy you want it, you add more water. So you could have no water. And you could make it or you could have, I would usually do like, so a single recipe is one cup of cashews. So I do like a, a cup of water per cup of cashews. So usually I do a double recipe. So I put two thirds of a cup of uh, water in and then it has sort of a, like a, a texture that you can slop on things. And someone was telling me the other day, instead of soaking in water, they use veggie broth. Hmm. Depending on what you're using it for, I guess, hmm. because you might not want that. That sounds like too much work. I would like to soak in veggie broth. <laughs> Well, um, plantains with Gary, that's the whole show. <laughs> the opening the opening scene is me sitting in a bathtub full of it, veggie broth. And today we're going to talk about... <laughs> and every single dish you make has to do with something with plantains. Um, it always starts off with a plantain base. <laughs> I, I could do this for a while. I could do this for a while. Um, I had to go get uh, stuff at the grocery store last night, and uh, Rhonda said, oh, can you pick up chicken broth? Sure. She said, if you get beef, beef broth, don't bother coming home. Okay. <laughs> wow. So now, well, I mean, she said jokingly. I don't think she said it quite as crass as I. We all joke I, until <laughs> somebody brings home beef broth instead of chicken. Well, right. So I sent her a photo from the, the broth aisle with a big question mark. <laughs> you know, which, I'm confused. Which did you want? Um, yeah, I don't know why that seemed so... <laughs> I'd be, I'd be tempted to, to just take extra long and just be like, I wasn't going to come home because I got the wrong broth. 
<laughs> out of the four types that there are. <laughs> Where are you? I bought beef broth on my way to the Greyhound station. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It'll be a while. Just go see a movie or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm not actually sure what it's for. Right now it is a uh, counter decoration. Hmm. Yeah. yeah, we usually get bouillon, and we get it at Costco, so we get like a big sort of jar of this concentrated bouillon stuff, um, because it's, uh, it's, we used to get the cubes, um, but like, if you have to do half a cube, then you have this, you have to like cut it in half, and that's weird, so the, so scooping it out is like a tablespoon or something is equivalent to a cup of broth or something. Um, well, you always wind up with the cubes, you always wind up with like one eighth of a cube, and you're like trying to figure out, you're like, when yeah. am I going to use this, and then, yeah. well, yeah, we typically make recipes that are big enough that you don't end up with an eighth. <laughs> it's usually a half or like the whole damn thing. Like we'll just, we'll just up the recipe until we get to at least one. Add more broth. <laughs> um, but I could see that if you're, you know, if you were two people. When I was young, my dad uh, did something with, with beef broth. I don't, I'm not sure what he was doing. But there was like a pitcher in the fridge of beef broth, which happened to look just like tea oh, so i had been like mowing the lawn and came in and opened that and took a big old swig out of it as you do when you're in your teens right oh, no. and um <laughs> and i was cured of drinking out of containers in the fridge forever i will never do that again unless i'm 100 percent certain what it is and i'm finishing that container because <laughs> wow that was definitely not what i expected nor wanted oh. terrible did you do a terrible. take this story I, only works if you did, did a spit take. Like I did spit it in the sink. <laughs> yeah, I did not spray it across the kitchen. I went and spit it in the sink and then did the old like water from the sink. Like, eh, eh, I tried to clean the flavor out of my mouth. Oh, um, what is and then I'm like, you have to label that stuff. You know, as a punk ass kid, right? Yelling at my dad. He's like, maybe you should have poured a glass. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe like, how would that have helped? I still would have drank it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Maybe you would have smelled it going up to your mouth before just chugging it. Yeah. I mean, that's probably a fair point. Really, this is not not what I thought it was. It's a good way to learn that lesson, though. <sighs> yeah. No, parents, it's not. <laughs> parents take note if your if your child is <laughs> drinking out of containers from the fridge. That's one way of solving the issue. <laughs> I will not do that. Yeah, maybe I will. We'll see. If it becomes an issue. <laughs> yeah. So apophobia, apophonia, mm. apophenia, apophenia. <laughs> Gary, what is apophenia? Because I gave an answer. It is, it is the, um, apo uh, means. Um, it's also, it also could be like a, a sexual obsession with apples. Oh, that's why it sounds familiar. Oh. <laughs> uh, apophenia. Um, apophobia would be the fear of... I, I don't know what apo is. I have nothing. So, so, so the, great, uh, the great cinematic masterpiece, uh, Quadrophenia, yeah. uh, was about... Um, is that really a thing? Yeah. It was, uh, uh, it was a I, movie. Can, I can support this. It was, it was a movie that was done by The Who, uh, Quadrophenia. Had, um, oh. uh, I think Beyond Blue Eyes is on that. Um, it does course. sound made up, though. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, on this show, it's worth asking. <laughs> uh, yes, yeah, so Quadrophenia is about um, mods in the 70s in England who rode scooters and and hot rodded their scooters in a variety of ways, often by like adding just superfluous uh, mirrors to them. Um, yeah, apophen and getting in apoph fights. Yeah, apophenia, apophobia is the fear of having to um, uh, be a student. So apophenia is the joy of being a student. Okay. Well, this meeting has been upgraded by the host and now includes unlimited minutes. I got that too. Neat. Thanks, host. And the feeling of surprise. Sadly, he can't use the extra 10 minutes. 
<laughs> the feeling of surprise we just felt is apophenia. <laughs> I'm apophoric. We've removed the 40 limit time. Oh, probably because this is a fairly new install. Yes. Probably the longest call I've been on on my own channel <laughs> on the new install. Free version. Yeah, free version. Well, uh, but I could tell you that there's 10 minutes left, so we might as well get into what the answer is. <laughs> yeah, what the real answer is. What the real answer is? Yes. Maybe, yes. You, already, maybe you already touched on it. No. Maybe we did. Uh, You're it, like, not like Just like quadrophenia. <laughs> no. Oh, quadrophenia. Anyway, uh, <laughs> it's so apophenia is when you have the experience of finding or thinking you're seeing meaningful patterns and random data. So it was coined originally for like the beginning stages of schizophrenia, but it can apply as a larger whole to our human need to like tie random bits of data together as, as if there is meaning when there's really no meaning. So uh, who's, the in, who's the InfoWars dude? Tim Apple. <laughs> not, not Tim Apple. Uh, <laughs> there is a thing recently, I, I wanna say Glenn Beck, but it's not Glenn Beck. Um, no, but for our purposes, it's fine. Keep going. Yeah. Uh, the Infowars dude uh, was being sued, I guess, or something. I read something about, about him recently where he said that all of his con conspiracy theories uh, that he talks about on Infowars was the result of being, uh, was a result of uh, his mental health issues and um, feeling like the media was constantly lying to him about everything and so then he that that led him to believe uh a variety of ridiculous conspiracy theories so for him that would be so a possibly a symptom of apophenia where he's finding patterns mm -hmm. in nothing and he's just making up crazy stories as a result of them and then going on the radio and but isn't that the line like so seeing of the course it's a line of course making it up is yeah. is is clearly like, okay. <laughs> of course, of course I, it's a lie. It's, I didn't say I believed him. I said that. That's <laughs> I, I wasn't suggesting that you did. What I was suggesting is, at, at the point where you see these patterns and you make up stories to support them, like it's it's clearly no longer journalism, and it's yeah. Yeah. Are you like, stuck on that step? Is that the problem? Hold on. <laughs> well, like confirmation bias is an example of a type of apophenia of like. <laughs> Finding, finding the things that will help confirm your hypothesis mm. rather than disprove it. Or like for gamblers, there's also a thing of just, or, or like anything where you're just like, hey, I'm holding, like, I, I don't know. I even think of like sports where it's like people get that mythology of like, I wore these socks on this day and then my team won. So now yeah. I, I yeah. wear these socks on this day all the time because my team won. Yeah, and I used to. I, I do that, but I more for the silliness of it. I kept a spreadsheet uh, for a while of the RSL games that we attended and the ratio of wins to losses uh, for games that we went to uh, mm -hmm. with the theory that every time we went to a game, we lost. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, after we got season tickets, obviously that, that no longer is a, a viable theory. <laughs> they did win a couple of times. Um, At least a few. <laughs> yeah. um, I, say? I love doing it because oh. my kids think it's ridiculous. I wore the, I wore these socks with this shirt last week when the Jags played. So and they won. So I'm gonna do it again. But I haven't washed these socks because I didn't want to wash the luck off of them. It's like, eh, you know, it's great. Um, there it's ridiculous. Was interesting. It's great. There was an interesting experiment on brain uh, a brain games episode that we watched recently, which was uh, you know the game War, where it's like you divide a deck in half and. <laughs> over the top card and whoever gets the higher card wins and then you just keep yes. playing until somebody has all the cards um so we had a guy that did this experiment where it's the same guy there's an actor and he's dressed up as a a the the war world champion and they've added betting to the mix um so you can bet one dollar five dollars or ten dollars per hand and when he and then and then they did a second experiment where he, it's the same guy, but he's all like uh, disheveled and like dropping the cards and really clumsy and embarrassed and, and really insecure and, and unsure of himself. And uh, so every single time uh, in, for every hand, the professional the war champion, the person playing against him only ever did the minimum bid, which is $1. Um, and every single time, 
uh, against the disheveled, like confused uh, guy, uh, they always bid the highest bid, even though the rules of war are 100% random. Like it's entirely luck. There's no skill whatsoever. Our brain still is like overcompensate. Oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna get one in on this guy because he's obviously like in like he's got a an opening that I'm gonna exploit. Whereas the other one, the the champion is like, well, this guy knows what he's doing. And could could card counting not come into play here? Like the first pass through, you have no no idea it's random. But are you required after, to shuffle after, after, yeah, after the first? I don't know. I don't through? know. I well, oh. I mean, uh, I do not know the rules of war. <laughs> <laughs> freaking rules of war but i think you shuffle uh, I don't know. a convention uh, i'm sure there's different rules it, yeah there probably are not not by the rules my kids play by <laughs> there's no shuffling involved yeah. yeah so at that point if you were savvy you yeah could you could count two. cards yeah but yeah. you'd have to be i know quite, that there's a thing coming and so yeah you'd have to be quite savvy in card counting because when you win someone else's cards it would disrupt your your cycle of your pile so then it wouldn't be like the third card you know would be the highest because you've already also won five other cards or whatever. yeah but you could get to a point where like you, you know you remember that there is a, a string of like low value cards and if you have like a, a face card in your hand and like i'm I, I think i'm at that point so i'm in a bit bit higher but yeah it's 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 just it's dumb. It's silly. It's a very silly game. I hate that. I've told I told the kids when when they were playing it too. Like I hate this game. It has no There's skill. No, yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, sure. Yeah. I don't hate it if it's keeping them occupied and quiet. Right? That's true. Well, no. That that well, that's <laughs> occupied <laughs> that's and quiet. What yeah. Was that? Yeah. No. No. Not not so much the second thing. <laughs> Oh, especially, oh, especially sorry. when you play, they played a, a variation of war where you have to slap your hand on on the card to get to get the thing, and if you don't do that, then the other person wins anyway. So, yeah. like when that's involved, then there's it's not a quiet game. No, that's chaos. <laughs> that's war. <laughs> that sounds more like kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What um quiet card do we, game? Do we have questions today? Uh, we have some Allison questions. Yes. Uh, if you had to choose between a sentence in exile by yourself or a cell with 10 other people, which would you choose and why? Uh, I would not do well in exile by myself. So, although I guess... In I would exile, do I, I guess, better in exile by myself than in a cell with 10 people. I guess, I guess in exile does not mean in a cell in exile. It's not like a solitary confinement thing. It's like I'm on a desert island somewhere. Yeah. That probably sounds better. I would end up like Tom Hanks and talking to the, the basketball, though. Yeah. yeah I mean. <laughs> totally personify everything. I'd get pissed at the, the volleyball for, for talking smack about me. Yeah. We'd fight for a few days and then be friends again. Yes, I am totally in exile. I have talked myself into it. I'm not even considered being in a cell with 10 people. I mean, if it was just 10 people on the same island. Right. Take the island right. alone. Right. Yeah. The cell does not help yeah. the thought process in yeah. any way whatsoever. In fact, maybe I'll try that. Buy some beef broth and hit the road. <laughs> Exactly. Confined, so. confined quarter situation. Uh, okay. Well, that went that went well. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what is something that people think you and your partner have in common that isn't true? Oh, that's a fun question. <laughs> I I don't even have an answer for it. I'm sure there must be though. I don't know. Like I, it's. So we're gonna we're gonna hit our seventeen year anniversary in a couple weeks. Nice. And after after seventeen years, just all the interests kind of blend together. <laughs> like I don't I'm trying to think of like something that's distinct that would then also be something that people would confuse and think that we did have in common that we don't. I, I mean, besides like I don't know, like yeah, uh, I I, so, I, can tell you, I can tell you that uh, people frequently because Erin uh, uses henna in her hair to dye it red. Um, and uh, our daughter Lila has natural red hair. Um, mm -hmm. And so people frequently think that, oh, that's where she gets it from. And like, we have, we don't say anything because we're not going to have that conversation with a stranger, but every stranger <laughs> says it. Um, all strangers talk about red hair always. Um, yeah. Yeah. But, um, 
but uh yeah so but that's that's definitely something that people think that they have in common that is not actually true that's interesting so i am like the at like volunteer events like i'm the i'm the person that's happy to get on the mic and try and make order out of chaos right like i will not do any planning prior to the event but i think if people know rhonda they assume that i am going to plan ahead for the event i am not they know me they assume that rhonda is like outgoing and happy to lead the event she is not so that's an area where we totally differ. Yeah, I guess that's fair. Um, I think probably, probably people assume that, or might assume that I am less outgoing than I am if they know her and that she's more uh, extroverted, which is like any extrovert is far more extroverted than she is. Um, <laughs> if they know me and not her. Um, yeah, that's that's a fair point. Because then it's like this this the scale they're working on is like you're yeah, like, it's it's a really scale. Yeah, yeah, because like she's like way over here on on that end of the spectrum, and I'm like you know pretty close to over here on this end of the spectrum, and like yeah. Nope. Oh. And there goes Gary. He's got his got his meeting. No, that's that's fair though because I have a uh, I have a, a ant guy coming over so. <laughs> ant guy. Yeah, to to. to kill ants i thought you meant like i was like an aunt like like a male ant <laughs> yeah i was like that's interesting and fun it's like it's like there's there are t-shirts now for uh for man who has it all um which is um a twitter account uh okay. that you should follow um which which satirizes um uh the sort of 50s housewife things but flips it on its head and makes it about men so like um, so like, so there, there are t-shirts now and one of them <laughs> says, uh, male cat lady, um, and <laughs> male housewife and things like that. Um, uh, yeah. So, so yeah, I'm a, I don't know where I was going with that, but I'm a male housewife. I, I, I definitely wanted to get the male, the male cat lady. Uh, t the cat lady is good. Yeah. Cause I am a, in fact, a male cat lady. <laughs> and ant guy or. Yeah. So ant, ant man. Aunt right. man. Or you have a superhero in your aunt. house yeah. right now. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> but I'm sorry that you're having issues with ants, which is why I'm. Well, they kind of they kind of went away, but they um, but yeah, it's the season. They came out. Uh, we had them come over, and they put out some some bait, and they went after the bait, and then they had to come over, and then they came over again, and they left some traps, uh, and then it snowed, and then the snow melted, and then there's all the ants came inside again. So then I moved the traps to where they were going, and so they've kind of died down a little bit. Um, but yeah, at the time I was like, okay, we need to get them out again and, and have them do this area because it's not where they had gotten before. Um, yeah. It's just, I mean, it's just sort of an ongoing thing, which is fine um, because we have like this like subscription thing and they can come out for free uh, if you, if you have a subscription. So like, it's not, it's not a problem. It's just a scheduling thing. Um, tis the season. Yeah. Tis the season. <laughs> which is weird because like our other, like, other parts of the city don't have ant problems. It's just this this part of the city because we had ant problems in the other house too. Oh, weird. Yeah. I don't think of it as like a neighborhood based thing. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's weird. I don't know if it's like altitude or like heat cold or or what the difference is. But like Aaron's parents, Aaron's parents don't get them at all, like ever, no matter what they do. Um, so that's why it was <laughs> weird. They but... try to get ants. And yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they leave the yeah. sugar out. Like yeah. My granny always used to kill one ant and like leave it behind to like as, as a warning. As a warning to the other ants. Yeah, that doesn't work. Yeah, I, I don't know. We all yeah. You, we come, you come back to it. You come back to it like two days later, and the thing is not there, and you're like, now now what? It was actually not dead, or did they form perform a burial service? <laughs> they, they, they extracted the one ant that we left behind. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I don't know. All right. Well, uh, good show, I guess. And That's uh, sign off at this point. Yeah, weird. I I, I want to just like abruptly interrupt myself. Um, we can just command Q. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, we could. Uh, next week is a break because I'll be speaking at Open West, and then we'll have another show, and then we'll be on a break again. Yeah. So. That's how we roll. That's how we roll. And, uh, Thank you for listening to Binary Jazz. If you like this episode, you can subscribe to us on iTunes or Google Play. 
You can visit us online at binaryjazz.us or follow us on Twitter at at binaryjazz. Don't forget that you can ask us a question through the forum on the website or on Twitter, and we'll read it aloud on the next episode of Binary Jazz. Thank you.